right, sister. That's a mighty pretty head you've got on your shoulders. Do you want to keep it there, or do you want to start carrying it around in your hands? Maybe we could compromise and put it on your shoulder. I think that'd be nice, don't you? What were you doing outside that door? Doing? I was listening, naturally. Trying to, I should say. Oh, you admit it. You admit you were out there snooping. Yes, wasn't that naughty of me, but I'm afraid I was. I found an address in George's pocket. I thought he might be playing around with another woman, so I came over and here. And you'd care if he was playing another dame? That would bother you. <laughs> you don't understand me, Johnny. You don't know me very well. I know you like a book. You're a no-good, nosy little tramp. You'd sell out your own mother for a piece of fudge, but you're smart along with it. Smart enough to know when to sell and when to sit tight, and you know you better sit tight in this case. I do. You heard me. You like money. You got a great big dollar sign there where most women have a heart. So play it smart. Stay in character and you'll have money. Plenty of it. George will have it. He'll blow it all on you, probably by himself, a five-cent cigar. Mm. You don't know me very well, Johnny. I wouldn't think of letting George throw his money away on cigars. Isn't there a big if in there somewhere? Yeah, there's a couple of them. If you're smart, if you keep your trap shut and don't nose around anymore, you'll have money. You'll be loaded with a capital L, but if you don't, there'll be nothing. We'll forget the whole thing. Nothing will happen and you won't have a penny. I wouldn't like that. And frail as I am, I'd much prefer to be loaded. I think we understand each other. Now. Nah.